surprise! <laughs> I'm moving to Manhattan. I'm in the milk and the honey, but you could get to know. Pick up all of the wine, all the wine that flows. Yeah, I pretend I'm a jealous, trying to keep my cool. Never rest in my eyes while I'm watching you every move. Welcome to my New York City apartment hunting video. This is a very, very exciting video. I love looking at apartments and spaces and imagining my life there and finding a good deal. And also because I am fulfilling a dream that has long been in the works for me. My original idea of moving to New York City was living by myself in an apartment in Manhattan with a fire escape out the window and yeah, just living that <laughs> kind of like a girl in a rom-com. <laughs> but sadly, <laughs> New York apartments, especially in Manhattan, are expensive <laughs> AF. <laughs> and I kind of had to hold on that dream for a while. When I first moved to New York four years ago, I moved to Brooklyn and Brooklyn was my safe haven for a while. You can find good affordable apartments there. It's just a train ride right away to the city, but <laughs> it wasn't the New York that I had pictured in my head that I really wanted. Then right before COVID hit, as you guys know, I was laid off my job and I was in a really, really sad place and I just didn't really have any hope for the future. And then midway through all of that, I found my current job that I have now and things just started to turn around and I finally felt financially comfortable enough to get my own place in Manhattan. So I'm going to take you guys through the entire New York City apartment hunting process. I saw 11 apartments in total in different neighborhoods. So I'm going to show you the apartments that I toured. I'm going to talk about the different neighborhoods that you could live in in New York City. I am also going to talk about rent prices and get specific. And a quick disclaimer, if you are from Texas, I do not want, <laughs> I know that you can get the same, you can get a mansion for the price that we are paying for tiny apartments in New York City, but that is not what we want. We're here because we're young. We want to live in Manhattan. We want to experience all that the city has to offer. The people, the food, the restaurants, the art, the culture, the history. Just that hustle and bustle. So, yes. <laughs> you guys some information on the New York City real estate market and how looking for an apartment works here. First off, where to look. So Street Easy is the main place that people go to find apartments in New York City. I recommend downloading the app, but they also have a website too. Um, there's also um, Zillow and Apartments.com, but generally people prefer Street Easy. It's really easy to use. You just go to StreetEasy.com, you put in your parameters, so say you choose rental, and then you say you know your price, your max budget, how many bedrooms you want, um, what neighborhoods you want to live in, etc. And then you can just kind of search on the map where you want to live, and then just con like um, you'll see a button, you'll see the the broker who's listed it, and they'll have some contact information. You can send them a message and just say, hey, you know, can I come to your open house that you're having at this time in this date? Or hey, are you available to show the apartment? this Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m. for example. The second thing is timing. So you want to start looking for apartments in New York City, I'd say generally about a month in advance. The first thing that the brokers are going to ask you when you contact them is, when is your move-in date? Most move-in dates are the first of the month, so if you were looking right now, you would tell them I'm looking for September 1st, or whenever your lease is up, which um, for mine, it was up July 31st. So I started looking for an August 1st. If you look any sooner than that, the apartments that you're looking at are going to be gone by the time you want them. They're not going to align with your date, but also you do want to start getting a feel for what kinds of apartments you can afford in your price range and what's a good deal. So you might see an apartment and think, okay, this is all right, <laughs> but, and the price is kind of high, and then once you get to see other ones, you'll realize, okay, that was actually a bad deal. 
So you just kind of want to get a feel of what you like, what you don't like, what your priorities are, etc. So you do still want to start looking early just to get a feel for it, but you're probably not going to make a move on an actual apartment until like a week, maybe two before. The next thing that you need to know is that you have to act quick when it comes to apart apartment hunting in New York. You can go to an open house and before the end of the open house, somebody has already submitted an application and it's taken off of the market. This is actually my third time apartment hunting in New York and I can say that I have actually seen this happen firsthand multiple times. So before you even start apartment hunting, you need to be ready with your paperwork. The next thing is cost. So before you start apartment hunting, just be aware of the costs involved. So I was looking for an apartment that was preferably about $1,800 a month, but definitely under $2,000 a month. And I would say that that's probably about the minimum that you can do in New York if you want to live by yourself. Otherwise, you can find shared apartments, like where you're just doing a room with other roommates. For less than that, the minimum at least in Manhattan would be a thousand depending on the area to like 1500 you know in between there you can just do a room with some roommates you kind of you just do you do have to shop around but i'd say that that's about the minimum and the minimum for living by yourself is about 2000 so that's how i kind of felt ready was i thought that i could do that when you go to apply for an apartment and you get approved there's going to be costs involved which i will put up on the screen so first is the application fee this can be anywhere between 20 dollars and 500 dollars it's just kind of like a good faith um deposit or just sign, sort of holding your money while they're reviewing your application. The next thing is the first month's rent. So you're going to have to pay your first month's rent up front. That's pretty um, obvious. Some uh, apartments do also require last month's rent up front as well. So that's another cost. The next is security deposit. So that is equal to one month's rent. So you have to have your security deposit and that's something that basically your landlord holds on to the entire time that you're living there and then when you leave they take a look at your apartment see if you've damaged anything and then they either give you your security deposit back or they deduct some costs based on if they need to patch up a wall or fix the floors or whatever damage you do and then the last one which is the least fun is a broker's fee so the broker's fee is typically around 12 to 15 percent of the annual rent so yeah so if your annual rent I'll put up on the screen what that would be for a two thousand dollar apartment but yeah so um so that's that's not fun thankfully though if you are looking right now there is a huge COVID discount on a lot of apartments so I know there was on the one that I found right now just given everything that's happening in the world with a lot of people moving out of the city there's a huge break on broker fees so i didn't have one but usually in new york this is something that you're going to have to pay it's annoying but that's just kind of the real estate market here the next thing that i want to talk about is the requirements so new york city is actually very strict in that you meet certain requirements and able to be eligible to live in an apartment here the first is that you have to make at least 40 times a monthly rent so whatever your monthly rent is multiply that by 40 times and you have your annual salary has to at least match that if it doesn't then you can also have a guarantor however your guarantor has to make 80 times your uh, monthly rent so that's incredibly high okay and then lastly is the paperwork so like I said before you even start apartment hunting you need to have your paperwork ready to go because apartments get taken off of the market really quickly and you might see something that you absolutely love and it's already gone by the time you even get home that night because you did, didn't have your paperwork ready so the paperwork that you generally need is a letter of employment, tax return, last two pay stubs, last two bank statements, your photo ID, and then a reference letter from your last landlord. That's not totally required, that's optional, especially if this is your first time moving and you haven't had a landlord before, but it definitely helps if you can get one. Okay, so let's move on to the actual apartment tours. quickly on what I'm looking for. So I was looking for a studio or one bedroom in downtown Manhattan for 2000 or under a month. My top requirements were, or my top like priorities were one location. So I knew I wanted to be downtown. 
too light the apartment had to have lots of natural light one for my sanity but then also <laughs> just because of you know being on youtube and everything i couldn't just live in a dark apartment i need natural light for shooting and filming and everything and then three i really wanted a fire escape out my window and that's just because i don't know that's just kind of what i always pictured that's what i feel like is just so authentically new york and yeah it just i just want to like sit outside it and just enjoy i don't know so yeah those are my priorities so i saw apartments in Kips Bay, Nolita, Noho, Soho, the West Village, Chelsea, and the East Village. Oh, and the Lower East Side. <laughs> so the very first apartment appointment that I had was in Kips Bay. The apartment was okay, but I'm not a big fan of this location. It's more uptown than I want to be, and in my opinion, there isn't really much to do in this location. I did like that the apartment had its own little sleeping nook, so it would feel like the bed was separated from the rest of the apartment. It had a good amount of windows, a nice sized closet, and a giant mirror, which would have been very convenient for getting ready as a girl. And it did have a fire escape out the window, although it was facing the back of the building, it still did have one. The kitchen was very small and hidden behind these two closet doors, which was very quirky. I actually didn't mind how tiny and cute it was, but it wouldn't have been very easy to cook in there. And the bathroom was okay. I liked the shelves that were in the shower, but otherwise it was just kind of a normal bathroom. All in all, I thought that the apartment was cute and had lots of living room space, but it just wasn't the location that I wanted to be, in my opinion. Next was the East Village, which is kind of a young, cool, hip area. It has lots of college kids and post-grad live there, so it's very young, it has lots of bars. This one was nice and it felt kind of cozy and had a perfect fire escape out the window and a total New York-y brick wall. It felt very newly renovated and had a nice closet space for all of my storage needs. And the kitchen was nice with lots of counter space. It had brand new appliances and a dishwasher, which is really hard to come by in New York. The bathroom was really cute and bright and something about it just felt cozy. It was a true one bedroom with a separate bedroom in the back. However, the bedroom just gave me bad vibes. I don't know. It was pretty dark back there and to be honest, my bed is where I spend a lot of my time so I didn't want to be stuck back there in the dark. I believe this apartment was also $2,400 so definitely out of my price range. However, the broker did said that um, you could put in a lower offer so I kept it in the back of my mind. The next apartment was also in the East Village. This one was a little bit bigger and had lots of space overall. A bit of a weird layout and you couldn't see the windows from the kitchen living room area. The bathroom was meh, not really anything special and the fridge was in this awkward placement that I didn't really love. The bedroom in the back was a weird combination of new and run down. Um, it felt like good light, but I didn't like the weird fireplace turned shelving unit thing and I believe they were asking for 1800 but I wouldn't have done any more than 1500 for this place because I just, you know, it wasn't worth it to me. I didn't like it. Then I saw a third apartment in the East Village and this apartment was actually pretty nice. Um, it had a nice closet space and I liked the way the light was coming in through the window. The kitchen was brand new and it was really pretty. Um, it had lots of counter space, brand new appliances, and a full-size fridge. So, so basically, the kitchen was amazing, um, but that wasn't one of my big priorities here. So it did have a big closet, which would have been clutch, and the bathroom was fine, so that was okay. Um, what was really cool was that there was laundry in the building, which would have been super convenient, and also it had this outdoor terrace, which is really hard to come by in New York. Um, the only thing about this apartment was that it was on the first 
floor. So you weren't on eye level with people like who were walking on the street, but pretty much. Also felt like if someone really wanted, they could have reached over to my window from the steps into the building. You know, it did have that big closet and the kitchen was nice, but overall it just wasn't the feel that I was going for. I didn't like that it was on the first floor and it didn't have a fire escape, so. Okay, then I saw an apartment in Chelsea, actually kind of closer to meatpacking, which is a really nice area. It has a lot of trendy attractions there, like the High Line, the Chelsea Market, and lots of upscale restaurants. And then also it has more in meatpacking, like a lot of bars and clubs for going out, like PhD, The Standard, um, it has Brass Monkey there, um, The Jane, etc. So, um, you know, if it weren't COVID and if I were still into going out to those places, that would be nice. <laughs> I do like Brass Monkey though, I have to say. This apartment had by far one of the best outdoor terraces I have ever seen in Manhattan. It was all taken care of by the tenants themselves. It had these beautiful flowers and ivy and plants and these cute little seating areas. And also it had this little dog which was owned by the super and apparently likes to make an appearance every so often which is so cute and just feels kind of homey. Um, so the outdoor terrace was just insane. The actual apartment itself was very cute. The kitchen was basically non-existent, so really only good if you have, like never want to cook ever and only order takeout, which honestly, a lot of New Yorkers just live that way. <laughs> but I'm not one of them. I like to cook my own food and try to be healthy. There was one main room which had this really cool storage unit that was actually built by a previous tenant who was an architect. And given the lack of closets in the apartment, um, the storage space would have been a lifesaver. And it had mirrors on both sides, which I thought was also really, like, a really nice feature. And the bathroom was okay. It was just a normal bathroom, nothing good or nothing bad. It was just sort of a doable bathroom, I don't know. So the only thing here with this apartment was that it came with a broker fee, which due to COVID right now, they're actually... I haven't been any broker fees for any of the other apartments that I saw. So I would have had to have paid this guy um, $3,400 just as a broker fee versus $0 for the other apartments that I was seeing. And you know, it didn't have that fire escape um, and the kitchen was like non-existent. So therefore, no. The next apartment was in NoHo. This one specifically was on St. Mark's Place which is also a very nice area. St. Mark's Place specifically, I'd say, is a little bit more young. Um, a lot of college and post-grad um, people live there. It has lots of bars, kind of like the East Village, but NoHo in general is very nice. This apartment had a good-sized kitchen. It was new, it had a dishwasher, and it had good like counter and cabinet space, so that was nice. Um, the bathroom was okay. It had a good amount of storage in it and it felt cleaner and new, which was nice, which was something I liked about it. Then it basically had this long hallway which led to a living room area and then a raised bedroom area. I thought it was cool that it had a fireplace and a brick wall and I liked how the bedroom was raised a little bit which felt like it gave it some separation from the rest of the apartment. It did have a fire escape, but it was facing the back, so not so fun, but it was nicely tucked away in the building, so that was cute. I did ask for an application to this apartment, but overall I wasn't in love with it. It just wasn't the feel or the vibe that I wanted, so I, I didn't end up taking it. Then I visited an apartment on the Lower East Side, specifically on Bowery Street. The LES is a cool, trendy like neighborhood to live in in New York. It has a lot of cool like going out, <laughs> bars, areas, restaurants, young people, um, lots of places to sit outside, brunch spots, uh, that sort of thing. So I actually loved this apartment. What drew me to it was all of the natural light. So it's not technically south facing, but it looks like it is with all of these windows just pouring in light. And it also had sweeping views of the city and such a cute fire escape outside. It would have made such a great background for photos. 
this apartment was also killing it with the amenities it had central air it had a full-size fridge it had a brand new oven a dishwasher the bathroom was brand new it was open clean nice and the best part it had a washer and dryer <laughs> This is super hard to come by in New York City, especially for this price. Most people are lugging their laundry down the street to the laundry mat or lugging it downstairs in their building. So that would have been an amazing luxury to have. The building also had an elevator in it, which would have been really convenient for moving, for when you're carrying your groceries home rather than like carrying them up all the stairs. It just would have been comfortable to live in and i loved the natural light and the views of the city that was just so cool it also happened to be above one of my favorite little like spots to meet up with my girlfriends um called cell rose it has these pink doors outside and I just love like getting like drinks and um oysters and stuff there so that would have been really fun and convenient the only thing about this apartment was that it was way above my budget at 2500 so I tried to put in a lower offer, but they wouldn't budge. So sadly, I had to say goodbye. The next apartment was in the West Village. Oh, the West Village. It truly is like a girl in a rom-com who lives in this neighborhood. It's just very picturesque and quaint with the brownstones and random cute doors. Um, I also love it because it's home to two of my favorite spots, Love Shack Fancy, which you guys know is my favorite clothing store and brand ever, and Magnolia Bakery, which makes the most delicious cakes. This is also the neighborhood where the iconic apartment in Friends is. So yeah, it's just an overall really nice area to live in. So the apartment overall was very nice. It was facing the street um, right across from the bar Fiddlesticks. The kitchen was tiny, but for such a great location, I'd say that it was worth it. And I felt like I could have made it work. Um, the bathroom was nice and new. So that, was, that wasn't bad. And then in the living room area, I actually really liked the hardwood floors. It was a true one bedroom, so I liked how it had a separate sleeping space and a very decent amount of storage space with the closet and then someone put more hanging racks on the side. So that would have been perfect for all of my clothes and all of my dresses. <laughs> and so the broker actually showed me the same apartment, but on a different floor of the building as well, just for, um, just as like another option, another apartment that was available to look at. This one was slightly bigger, but it had carpets instead of hardwood floors. And I definitely like hardwood floors better, but I don't know, something about this apartment actually felt super cozy and tucked away to me. I thought that I would have been really happy there in the winter especially, and just generally would have enjoyed living there. The only thing <laughs> was that it was on the higher end of my price range, both of them. I think these were about 2,400, so it would have been out of my budget and I just wouldn't have felt comfortable, but they were really cute. The last neighborhood that I looked at was in Nolita, which is a really cute, super trendy area. Um, it's right next to Soho, so you have all of the shopping close by. It's a really cool, just like Instagram-y area. So Soho obviously has all of the shops, all of the shopping, all of the cool brunch spots, and all of the cool backgrounds to shoot photos, which you guys know I do, I shoot Saturdays, so great location. This apartment was actually right across from Pietro Nolita coincidentally, so that was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys are familiar, that's like this pink restaurant. A lot of people use it as a background for Instagram photos. So the location was good, however, it was actually one of the least, my least of favorite apartments that I saw. It was very dark and kind of old inside. The layout was also very similar to one of the ones in the East Village that I shot, saw and showed earlier. Overall, the apartment just wasn't really my thing and just not what I was looking for. So I believe it was about 2000 also. And then we came to the final apartment and 
when I walked in I had this instant feeling of this is exactly what I'm looking for I loved the light I loved the windows I loved the fire escape out the window the hardwood floors um, and it just gave me that like this is right vibe like this is what I had pictured in my head the location was also in Nolita technically kind of like Nolita Soho it's walking distance to all of the Soho shopping cute restaurants it's very close by also to the little cupcake bake shop which is my favorite one of my favorite spots in New York I just love that little spot and I've always just wanted to live nearby the little cupcake bake shop I don't know and yeah so I just loved the open space the kitchen was okay it was small but it had enough of what I felt like I needed it had a full-size fridge um, just enough cabinet space etc and then the bathroom was fine the bathroom was a little bit older kind of had a tiny sink and a little shower but it had a lot of storage space which I thought would be great for all of my makeup and hair and towels and all that sort of stuff the broker was actually showing the same apartment but on another floor which was staged so I was actually able to see how furniture would fit in the apartment and say okay a queen bed is this size you know how much room would that take up and just kind of generally get a feel for how you could arrange furniture in the apartment and what fits so after seeing that I thought okay you know all of my essentials would fit <laughs> so if it's not already obvious <laughs> This is the apartment that I chose and I am just so elated and excited and happy to be here. After I saw it, I immediately applied that night. I got all my paperwork in and then about one or two days later, I got a text from the broker saying that I was approved for the apartment. He said, congrats, you're approved. And I was so excited. And then that Friday, I got the keys to the apartment. should really have that experience of living by themselves for at least a couple of years. I think that as young women, <laughs> we all need to, um, yeah, just have an experience of it's only you, you gotta figure it out yourself. <laughs> You're responsible for everything, you and solely you. You know, if there's a bug, you have to figure out how to kill it on your own. If there's, you know, a leak or something, it's just a good learning growth experience. I think that everyone, not even just girls, should experience is living on their own. And um, yeah, before I ever, like, when I th first kind of had this idea of moving to Manhattan or moving to New York City in my head, I always kind of, as everyone, kind of pictures is living in Manhattan, um, you know, right where all the action is kind of happening and 
having a fire escape out your window. And um, so I just, it, it, it hasn't really sunk in yet. And I, um, yeah, I can't believe that I have my own place. It really just, it's so crazy to me. Only two weeks ago was it that I even thought, oh, you know, maybe I should move. My lease is up. What if I just live on Street Easy? <laughs> what if I just toured some apartments? <laughs> what if I just applied for an apartment and then next thing you know, <laughs> I'm signing the papers and we're here. So yeah, I think living in Manhattan is definitely going to be different than living in uh, living in Brooklyn. Um, I had just like the best landlord in Brooklyn and um, I think everything is just a little bit tougher in Manhattan, but I am I'm up for the challenge. I think I'm ready to to, to take a risk in my life and um, yeah. So I was so excited. I am still so excited. I can't wait to share this journey with you guys. It's just crazy when something that you thought never would have come like came true comes true, and you you know have. You feel like you've doubted yourself and um, just that you would never be good enough or something or whatever. Um, and then it all just kind of happens and I have chills just thinking about it. Um, but yeah, I am so happy and <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Um, I hopefully in my next video will be my moving vlog and then I'm just going to kind of show you guys the decorating process and everything from here. So. I can't wait to share all of that content and I can't wait to take you guys with me on this this little journey so thank you for watching and supporting and hopefully I will see you guys next time all right bye